Ever wondered what motivates people to get plastic surgery? Did they regret it? What can we learn from the stories of plastic surgery patients? We're here to explore those questions and get some answers with my guest, Adria, on the Plastic Surgeon Podcast. Cool. Hello, my friends. Welcome back, and thanks to our listeners for the amazing feedback. We have had so much fun so far and look forward to more of your insights and suggestions. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts so we can get you more amazing content. On the Plastic Surgeon Podcast, we listen to real plastic surgery stories of triumph and pain from real patients to and providers to further understand why they would risk their life under the knife. I'm Dr. Javad Sajjan, and my guest today is the amazing Andrea. Andrea, we're here to talk about your journey, how we came to know each other, the procedure you underwent, and how it affected you. Now, the surgery that you underwent was a breast augmentation, right? Yes. And Andrea, tell us, where are you from? So, originally, I'm from uh, Mexico. I was born in Mexico. I'm in Chihuahua. Oh, wow. And I've moved here because my mom remarried. Um, So, actually, not here, in Arizona. I moved to Arizona when I was about eight years old and been here ever since so grew up in arizona and have been here in seattle for about almost two years now wow and uh where is chihuahua next to um, the u.s border if you will yeah so it's actually um right by texas so el paso Uh um the border town is juarez oh okay yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, and how long did you live there before you moved um so i was there for eight years um so i went to uh, uh kindergarten um, and then first through fourth grade, finished fourth grade, and then um, we moved to Arizona. Yeah, did you have any siblings? Yes, I have. Um, from my mom and my dad, I have one older brother. Mm-hmm. He's eight years older than me. And then from my dad, um, my real dad, because I, I have, I would say I have two dads. Mm-hmm. I have my stepdad and then I have my dad. Um, I have a little brother and a little sister. Uh, so you must have known your dad and you must have been close a little bit when you moved. Is that right? I was very little. Yeah. So um, I don't think we were as close, but uh-huh. um, that's why I think I um, call my stepdad and my dad because he's he basically raised me. Oh, uh, understood. Mm-hmm. And what led your mom to make the move? So marriage, I mean, I mean, her and my stepdad, um, they dated like 20 years prior to that. So uh-huh. Um, they uh, reunited and they were like, hey, like maybe we could make it work and they sure did and they've been together ever since. So um, when I was eight years old, they've been together and I'm 28 now. So. Wow. Mm-hmm. And do you mind, if you can't share, that's okay, but what led your parents to separate? Um, I think just not differences maybe. Uh-huh. I, I don't really know the, the details of it, uh-huh. um, but I, w- I was just born. So I was like maybe a month old and they separated yeah so i never grew up with like a mom and dad in the same household i always knew they were in separate households um typically every saturdays when i would see him Mm -hmm. um so those are like the the very young memories that i remember so do you have a relationship with your uh, biological father still yes i do yeah um we he's in mexico so with um with his family and my little brother my little sister um but we talk here and there um we try and talk like at least I don't want to say once a month. That might be a lot. <laughs> but um, definitely try and uh, talk to each other as much as we can. Um, but the relationship is definitely there. That's great. Mm-hmm. Did your mom and stepdad get married in Mexico? Uh, they actually got married here or in Arizona. I always say here, but in Arizona, in the United States. Uh, but they met in Mexico. Mm-hmm. They met in Mexico. How did they get? You know, I'm an immigrant, mm-hmm. too. And my family's lived all over, but we were able to get to the U.S. because my aunt was living here, and mm-hmm. she made us made a pathway for us to get here. What What was your family's pathway to get to Arizona? Uh, the pathway my, was my stepdad. So, um, because I was still um, under eighteen, uh-huh. I could just be a resident, just like my mom or my mom. Uh-huh. So automatically, and um, so we were residents when we when we um, were living here, and actually. 
in 2019, I um, got my citizenship. So. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Congrats. Thank you. So your stepdad was a citizen? Yes, he's a citizen. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's how your mom and you got here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And yeah. you were, how old were you when you moved to Arizona? I was eight years old and uh -huh. um, my brother stayed behind because he was going to start university. Uh -huh. um, so it was just easier for him to stay over there. I was still very young, so I could build a life here and he, you know, was just about to start his career so that's cool how mm -hmm. long did you live in arizona um i i mean i've been there my entire life up until two years ago when um, my husband actually got a uh, job out here oh cool so you did high school over there mm -hmm. and, and then you went to college yeah how was your childhood uh growing up it was good i mean i was basically an only child um uh -huh. because my my uh, brother was in mexico so it was really good. Um, I was very spoiled. I was very happy, and I I don't really have any bad memories of my childhood. Yeah. I'm I'm very very blessed. I can tell you're so positive. It just radiates from you. Oh, thank you. I I think I get that from my mom. My mom's such a positive person, and she just brightens up a room. And I always say like I will walk into a room full of strangers and walk out of that room with a bunch of friends so that's awesome that's my motto <laughs> how do you how do you start a conversation with a stranger um i just like to talk about them because mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of people it's easier to talk about their life than me telling you a little bit more about my life but i want to hear about your life and i think it's a little bit easier and then i find common ground so i find like you know what do we have in common oh you're an immigrant as well. Like, how is that growing up for you? So that's how I try and, and start that conversation. And then um, I don't have to force anything. Typically, we just become friends. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So what, 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 let's say you went, walked into a room of strangers, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say you didn't know me, Adri me, Adrian, or anyone else. How would you start talking to us? You say, hi, how's it going? What, what's your, what's your, what's your pick, not pickup line, but what's your icebreaker? If you I'd be like, hey, how's it going? How are you guys? Like... Um, I think the biggest thing here for me is, are you from Seattle? Like, w what's it like living here? Um, I've only been here two years, so I think making friends and like where it's typically, I think we all know like the neighborhoods, right? So yeah. where, where do you live? I live in Lower Queen Anne. What about you? I think that way, oh, where do you hang out? And mm. so do you do any running? Like I like to run. What about you guys? So yeah, that's I think, cool. I think just starting off with, because I think a lot of Seattle um, residents are transplants from mm -hmm. it. So definitely try and find that common ground if you are from here. A lot of people talk about the Seattle freeze. Mm -hmm. You're, did you feel that at all or no? I felt it when I moved here. Absolutely. I felt it. And I'm glad that you brought it up. I didn't want to be uh, negative. <laughs> but definitely have felt the Seattle freeze. And I think Arizona is so... Um, I'm going to hype them up, of course, but it, they're so open. So I've met so many people um, growing up when I was in high school. They've come from the Midwest. They've come from the East Coast and they moved to Arizona. And we just they're just we're just so open. I feel like Seattle, um, you have your own clicks, clicks already. So mm -hmm. if you are from here, you have your longtime friends that you've had for so long. And to allow somebody that's an outsider to come in, it's a little bit more difficult or maybe you don't have that common ground with them. So a lot of, actually, most of our friends from here um, or th that we met here in Seattle are from everywhere else. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the Seattle freeze? Um, I ex experienced it the first day that I moved here. So oh. I was walking down the street with my dogs and <laughs> I smiled at a stranger. It was, I mean, it was this beautiful sunny day and like mm -hmm. the stranger was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I was like, okay, I was like, uh, okay, maybe I don't smile at everyone. Um, I think coffee shops is a big one too. Uh, coffee shops is like, hey, how are you? Like the the barista, you know, um, how are you? Just like, just how are you? And I'll be like, hey, I'm doing well. How about you? And they're like, good. What can yeah. I get for you? Like, I know. They're, it's not. It's not anything more. Um, it's it's very forced. It feels like, but we're very blessed to have found the friends that we have and. Um, some are from here. Um, most of them are not. <laughs> yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. A lot of local Seattleites, you don't see them in the cities anymore. They're sort of on the outskirts, I think. You know? I think so, too. Yeah, they've gotten away from the city. And I think a lot of transplants are the ones who are 
in the city. <laughs> I know. I heard 50% of people are foreigners right now in Seattle. Yeah. Wow, I believe it. Yeah. I, I don't think I've met a whole lot of people that in the city that are like, yeah, I'm, I'm from Seattle. Or if they do say they're from Seattle, they're like, well, actually, I grew up in Yakima. Or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and you're... Um, you, you, did you do college in Arizona? Yeah, so I went to uh, Phoenix College uh-huh. for two years, and then I went to ASU. Um, I didn't graduate from there, but I like to say I'm, that's my alma mater, but <laughs> and I still have like one year left. Yeah. Eventually want to go back and, and see, um, maybe not to ASU, but definitely finish it up. And what was your uh, degree at, at, when you were studying in the first two years? Um, communication. <laughs> okay. what, 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 are you, what are you doing now or what do you want to do? Um, so I, I work in the mortgage industry, so I am um, in client relations, so I think I can utilize that communication degree very well. Um, eventually, I think I, I change it up a lot. I mean, I really wanted to grow or, you know, grow, go up the ladder and be like, what do you say, corporate girly nowadays yeah. <laughs> but I think I've strayed away from that now and I definitely want to do something that's my own thing like I, I don't know if it's starting my own business or just doing something that's I'm my own boss I guess so I have to find that venture so I eventually I'd want to go back and still finish school because you can always fall back on that degree right so yeah, yeah. I, I definitely want to do something like that growing up I wanted to be a vet Oh, and cool. then I realized that you have to put pets down, and I was like, maybe that's not my thing. Yeah, <laughs> vet is tough because you gotta like when you're a doc, right? You gotta learn about one species, if you will. <laughs> yeah. When you're a vet, you have to learn something about everything. I bet. I mean, imagine like dogs, cats, etc. Like, I mean, I, I when I I was like, yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> Birds. Exactly, and the little bodies, they're little, there's no way, <laughs> but I I wouldn't, I don't think I would change anything for the world, I'm really happy with where I'm at right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. and your, your husband, how did you meet him? Uh, we went to high school together, so we weren't sweethearts, high school sweethearts, but um, we went to high school together, and um, we were in the same friend group uh, after high school, um, and then eventually we just kind of met up again and um started hanging out and then started dating we dated for about seven years and then we got married this past november wow congrats yeah. thank you how did you find high school uh, how do i what i'm sorry how was high school for you high school yeah oh it was great um i i loved it i played um softball and i did cheerleading so i had a lot of fun um i think my first my freshman year um i didn't i didn't have any like older um siblings around Mm -hmm. so I didn't know what to expect out of high school um I think that summer I ended up going to Mexico for a vacation I didn't know I was supposed to do like freshman uh like summer school or something and Mm -hmm. I I felt out of place that first year but then afterwards I got the group of it I I I um tried out for cheerleading I tried out for softball so I had a lot of fun that's cool was it easy to make friends and connect with people over there Mm -hmm. it was very easy yeah you find a a lot of um uh, my friends are have the same um taste in music or we like to do the same things um I mean now that we're older I think those that changes those habits change right so I I was never a runner before and now I was into running so when we moved here specifically to in seattle i don't know why it must be like everybody's active so um but i started running whereas before i don't think i ever saw myself running (laughs) so you know the way my high school was it was a little clicky like Mm -hmm. you would have like different groups sort of be with their own people it it was a it was a medium-sized high school in a nice neighborhood in wisconsin oh like but people it was so crazy you would see still people hang out in like different you, you would still see people hang out in different ethnic groups, right? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the Indian kids had their group. This group had theirs. Was it like that in, in your high school or not? No, because a majority of my high school was Hispanics. Oh. Yeah, so in Arizona, it was Phoenix, Arizona. So majority of them um, was Hispanic. So it was actually kind of funny because... Um, in, I think in other, in other high schools, and maybe for you, I don't know if you can speak on it, but it's like you knew there was like maybe a Hispanic group. Yes, or there was, yes. And it, it, for us, it was like we knew 
the white kids. <laughs> uh. We knew we knew the white kids and um like we knew who they were like oh the the white the white boy this the white girl this mm. like yes. <laughs> so it was it was really nice like when when I um when I was like in my mean, junior year um this girl uh, moved from the midwest and i was like wow what's that like yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean living in arizona and never really having any seasons never experiencing you know a white christmas or it was always just desert so i'm like wow what's that like so it, it was it's nice were there more hispanic people than caucasian kids i would say so mm-hmm. wow. yeah definitely so i don't think i think you come to Seattle, you go to a high school here, it's probably a lot different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, and your um, your my husband, what did, what did, he, did you guys go to the same college or different? Uh, no, different colleges. Um, he is actually a nurse. So uh, I was very blessed um, through my recovery of my surgery to have him. Um, but he's a nurse and that's the reason why we moved to Seattle because he got a really good opportunity out here and we talked about living somewhere else. We looked um, at other places, and uh, I think after COVID, it was a little bit hard hard mm-hmm. for nurses to um, to feel or to be in a place where they were very much appreciated. I think mm-hmm. the healthcare, uh, or like not the healthcare, but he was a little bit worn out. So mm-hmm. we're like, hey, let's look for a change. Let's let's see what's going on. So we looked at North Carolina um, just because that's where my brother is and his family. So mm-hmm. I'm like, that would be cool, um, and then the Seattle opportunity just kind of fell on our lap and um, that's why we're here. What kind of nurse is he? He's in the emergency uh, department. So. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Is he at one of the big systems here? Um, yes, originally he was um, Swedish and uh-huh. then now he's at UW. So. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Was it a travel contract or like a full-time job type thing? It was staff. Um, oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was awesome. staff. Yeah, so uh, I think eventually we want to do the travel after because we... Um, want to live here for a few more years and then maybe move back to Arizona and probably mm-hmm. start a family. But yeah. may- we'll see. <laughs> How do you compare living in Washington versus Arizona? I mean, the weather, right? Mm-hmm. It's so different. It's so nice. I mean, right now, summertime is prime time for Washington. Yeah. You don't. I don't think you want to visit Arizona in uh, summertime. So yeah. um, I think the how how like i mentioned earlier uh everybody's active so i don't think i don't you see that a lot in arizona or you maybe you do but um a lot of them they do hiking and everything i think here you see a lot of people running a lot of people on their bikes um public transportation too is is very different than mm-hmm. in arizona um so i i there's so many differences but um I miss Arizona, but I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, you, you see the good here. You see yeah. the good in everything. Mm-hmm. What, what would you say you like it more here, or is it too different to compare? I think it's because most of our family is over there. Uh-huh. You miss that aspect. If we had our all of our family here and our friends, like I think it'd be different. I'd be like, I'm set. I'm happy here. Yeah. Um, we have, you know, sometimes a, a white Christmas. So that that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. We experienced that the first year we moved here. We're like. We woke up and there was snow and I'm like, I've never woken up to snow around. Like it just made you feel like holidays and everything it was just beautiful. It, it just gave you a warm, a warm feeling. And the holidays just feel so much better now because you get that, you get the fall colors. You don't really see that. So I think if we had our friends and family here, I'd, be, I'd live here forever. <laughs> A lot of people say the cost of living here is really high. Mm-hmm. And some people will say, for most people, most of us, it's not worth it. Um, in that, you can get a similar job, make similar money in another state, and live for maybe half as much. Have you found that to be true or not as much? Probably, but I mean, I think Arizona's also um, getting to that point where it's a little bit uh, higher to, to look, or I guess the cost of living is, is you know higher now than when we moved. I mean, I'm constantly looking at uh, the apartments where we used to live and see the um, like the rent there and it's just so different than two years ago when we I moved know. there so when I first came to Seattle I had a one bedroom I remember it was in Ballard you know mm-hmm. where that is yes new building relatively new construction I was paying 1500 a month oh wow and I thought that was a lot 
Yeah. And this was in uh, uh, about six, six, seven years ago. Oh, six, seven years ago. Okay. And now I think the same apartment is going for three thousand a month. Oh, definitely. It, it it's wild. So I I'm very blessed that we have the opportunity to be be here and live here. Um, and I can see how a lot of people may not have that privilege or opportunity. So it it, it sucks because. It's a beautiful city, just so expensive. I mean, we go out to eat in Arizona, two of us, and you have a tap for like 50, 60 bucks maybe. I mean, here it's definitely like $80, $90. I know. That's mm-hmm. probably without drinks, you know? Without drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe sharing dessert. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So we saw that really quick. <laughs> That's wild. Um, and your husband, you said you met him in high school, right? Mm-hmm. And then you stayed in touch, lost touch, and came. How did you guys reconnect? We reconnected just because we were in the same friend group. So mm-hmm. um, we would always uh, go out, uh, whether it was parties or going out to the clubs, um, in the same friend group. And then we kind of just uh, started dating. And then we solidified, like, okay, we're exclusive. And then se- seven years later, we we decided to, to get married. So did, did he ask you out or did you push it in the beginning? Uh, no, so he did ask me out. And then I was like, oh, I was like, no. And then um, then he never, he didn't ask me after that. And I was like, hey, I think we have to be a thing. He's like, well, I asked you. And I was like, I know, but uh, can you ask me again? <laughs> 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 so we solidified, that's when we solidified, okay, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, we're exclusive. And our friends were, like, for it because they they kind of pushed it for a while. Um, When we were in high school, I think we kind of had a thing for each other. He's a year older than me, Mm -hmm. so he was in the same class um, as I was. It was, like, photography class, Mm -hmm. and he sat behind me. Um, But if I could go back and think about, like, oh, that's going to be your future husband, like, what? There's no way. <laughs> 10, 10, 11 years later, um, there's no way. But um, he's a really good He's a really good guy, so I'm very, very happy. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, why did you say no the first time he asked you out? Well, because I think I, I kind of did the, what are we? <laughs> and he's like, well, do you want to be my girlfriend? I was like, no, now I feel like I kind of pushed it. So, no, let's leave it. And then afterwards, it's like okay, maybe we should be boyfriend and girlfriend. I mean, I was seeing him a lot, like every day, basically. So, I mean, I think it was important to just have that foundation, like, hey, are we going to pursue this? And is this something serious? So it was important for me to have that. And I think for him as well, because he wanted to have a girlfriend. Um, I think he was definitely ready for that. And um, I think I was just a little afraid. But, oh, I see. Mm-hmm. So, so you guys were seeing each other, but mm-hmm. it wasn't official. But it wasn't official. And then when you asked to make it official, you wanted to take a little step back. Yeah, I was like, I was like, oh okay, M- uh, maybe was it because I asked you? Like, I don't want, I don't want you to feel like I'm uh, the one that's pushing it. And so he's like, no, no. And so I was like, no. And I mean, it was like a few days later. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it was, I got you. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm, I'm really happy um, with that. Like our boyfriend and girlfriend foundation, of course. yeah, um, has built everything from there. We've we've we're a really good partnership. He's my best friend, and so I I'm very happy that he's my partner for life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of people say the first year you live together is the hardest for mm-hmm. some people. Did you find that to be the case, or it wasn't the case? No, it wasn't the case. I think getting used to having somebody else, maybe not doing the things that you're used to, so. I'm used to maybe if I'm going to, you know, shower, I don't put my clothes on the floor and maybe he does. So I think getting used to that um, and just being like, hey, okay, what are, do we have some rules? Like, um, I don't think we ever had that struggle where it was like, I I don't want to live with you or this is so hard. It was very easy. He's very laid back. He's very patient. So, Mm -hmm. um I'm, I think, a little bit more of the opposite where maybe I'm not so patient and we balance each other. So I don't think it was hard at all, but I was very happy. <laughs> What's been one of the tough, toughest things you've gone through? Um, 
uh, him and I? Just you in general. Oh, me in general? Yeah. Mm, I think, I think one of the toughest things had, was at the time when I was eight, moving from, from Mexico and here, I was crying when, I mean, I, my mom, she sat me down and said, hey, like, this is going to be my husband. Are you, you know, are you okay with it? How do you feel? We're going to have to move. And I said, okay, um, I want you to be happy. Absolutely. And I mean, I was eight years old. So we had this mm-hmm. adult conversation. But when we left, I was so sad. I was crying. I was like, there's no way I'm coming back when I'm 18. Mm-hmm. And that was very difficult because I felt like I left my entire life behind. And I left family. I left my brother. I left my grandma, my dad. Um, so that was very difficult. But it shaped me for to be the person I am now. And, and I'm very happy that I know where I'm from. And I will never forget where I'm from. And I'll always cherish that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. What did your family feel about the move? Were they supportive or were they nervous too? They were very supportive, very supportive. And they just wanted my mom happy, I think, and us to be happy as well. And um, my stepdad, I mean, he's a great man. So Mm -hmm. I couldn't have asked for a better person to be um, her husband. What about your biological dad? Was he okay with it? He was okay with it. Uh, He was sad for sure. Um, He... uh, told me like he's like I don't even know what you look like when you wake up like we never had that kind of life like he's like I don't know if you wake up grumpy if you wake up sad like are you hangry (laughs) and so that I think um was difficult because we'll never really get to experience that it's always we I don't think we ever lived in this under the same roof um but he was supportive of my mom and enough of me to to live our life out over here. And I mean, Mexico's corruption, I think a lot of families could agree that it's better that you're over here in the United States than in Mexico where it could be pretty corrupt and Mm -hmm. dangerous. Yeah, I I know that firsthand. I I grew up in East Africa, so I I know how that life can be. Can be. Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. unpredictable. Yeah, and and it's not always horrible, right? But there's that possibility so Mm -hmm. and and when you came to seattle you lived for a couple years you started thinking about having a breast augmentation is this something that was a thought you had earlier on or how did it come to your mind yes i've always wanted um like a a breast augmentation i always i was like aspired (laughs) i always looked at um, I mean, I, growing up, I was very, um, I wouldn't say flat chested. I think up until like, I was maybe a little bit older is when I had a little bit more meat on my bones, <laughs> but I've always been very skinny. And, um, I just, uh, my mom just always told me like, you're beautiful the way you are. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but I want more, like I, I want more. And, um, I never thought I would actually do it. And when we when I talked about it with my husband, um, he was very supportive. So he's like, if that's what you want, you know, we'll do it. And I I bring it up here and there. And, um, I think just growing up, I, I, I would be lying if I said, no, I I never thought about it growing up, but I think ever since I, I could remember, I'd be like so fascinated by, you know, just, I think more cleavage. <laughs> I see. And how did that idea come in your mind that you could put implants in? Did you watch a video? Did you have a family member who did it? Yeah, I mean, I had friends who, who went through that, and I'd be so amazed. Like, I'd ask them so many questions. And um, even now, like, before I did um, the surgery, I asked all my friends who went through and, and had a breast augmentation, and, and I asked them, like, what do you – do you have any regrets, like anything that you, any pointers? And um, they helped me out so much. And I watched videos too, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you came to see, why didn't you do it sooner? What led you to do it at this uh, this point in your life? You're, ha- you, you're about one month out of surgery, right? Exactly one month today. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I wanted to wait after maybe having babies. And now that my husband and I like still talked about 
when that t- time frame is or when that time frame is looking what that time frame looks like I wanted to wait to have kids and I said well why don't we just do it now it's okay um, I I don't I don't think we're in a rush to, to really start a family right now and so I'm like I, I'd rather do it right now this is prime time <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm feeling you know beautiful I'm, I feel young I think this is the best time to do it for me and mm-hmm. when, when are you all thinking about having a larger family? Probably, we keep changing the time. Mm-hmm. So I we said two years. Now we're thinking three. I think more like four. I it really I don't think there's a set time frame, but we're just going with the flow of maybe staying here for probably two more years or so, um, and then going from there. And why would you want to raise your family in Arizona versus Washington? That's a very good question. Uh, I think we have the uh, family there, so it'd be a lot easier. I'd want my kids to have uh, grandma and grandpa there um, and his um, his mom as well there and um, uncles. So he has three other uh, brothers. So uh, having the uncles there, having just family there, um, I think it goes to show that when I was younger, maybe I didn't have you know, a big family. He has a really big family. I have a very small family. So um, having that, I think, is important for me and is important for him. So if he has to work, if I have to work, um, we have someone there. I feel like here, he would probably be the only one working and I'd be home, but it just makes sense to be in Arizona Mm -hmm. with family. Other than family, anything else? Uh, not really. I don't think we've talked about where we would want to live or the maybe where we want to raise them, like specifically in neighborhood wise. Like, um, actually, he has. He said he he wants them to go to public school. That it shapes them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, but I don't think we've talked any more details besides just family is the biggest thing for us. Having my mom and my dad there as the grandparents, like mm-hmm. they're just anxious. They're waiting for us to to do this and so when I told my mom I was having surgery she's like I thought you said you wanted it after kids yeah I'm like she's like that means you're just prolonging this and they're just eager to be grandparents (laughs) is your mom a grandparent right now she is we have uh I have a nephew and um a niece from my brother Mm -hmm. so the thing is is that they live in North Carolina Mm -hmm. so it is a little bit more difficult and I just wouldn't want to do that I'm like I want my kids with Ma, grandma and grandpa. Do you think they would ever come here? Uh, yes. Uh, to live, no. Uh, to visit, yes. Mm-hmm. But to live, no. When you get older, it's impossible to move. You know? I, she doesn't want to. Yeah. yeah, yeah it. <laughs> they don't want to. They're happy. I mean, they're they're a really good location in Phoenix, and um, I I don't really see them living anywhere else. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, how did you hear about me? Oh well. I actually was, I mean, I think it's because we have, you know, detectives on our phones that you say, hey, I'm thinking about getting a breast augmentation, and now all these videos popped up on my TikTok, Uh and I um, just came up with, like, a funny one. I I think it was, like, you throwing implants at, at, like, during the TikTok. It was was so funny, Uh and I was like, real Dr. Seattle, I was like, I like my for you page like tiktok is trying to tell me something so <laughs> i sent it to my husband and he's like well, let's look into it so we looked um into it and i mean you had your content's amazing thank <laughs> it's, you it's funny it's engaging and very very um educational i think i learned a lot just from watching your your videos alone and uh that's how i find you so and i i followed you on tiktok then i'm like okay well let's see instagram like I'm, I'm, I want to see visuals. I want to see pictures before yeah. and after. And you had all of that um, on Instagram and on your website. So uh, you had all these resources. I mean, you go to your website and those frequently asked questions. I think I went through that like two or three times because I just wanted to read and read. So I would say just TikTok and then eventually on Instagram. And that's when I followed you. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And were there any videos that you found helpful? more helpful was it the youtube surgery videos was it my explanation videos what's 
really connected with you, if anything did? Oh, I got to say this, Instagram stories. The Instagram stories. Oh, really? The, the live feed. Stories, the live feed. So ah. um, those I those were so helpful to me. I mean, I, I was probably, I always say, like, I was probably the first one, like, as soon as you posted, I'd be like the first one because you always popped up on my first uh, yeah. story there. And it's like, hey, today we're doing a breast augmentation. I'm like, oh, I'm watching this. Like, yeah. So it was so helpful to me. I learned so much um, and I'm very happy with the results. I mean, I got to say, like when I had my surgery exactly a month ago, my friends added you on Snap or added, you know, you yeah. on Snapchat. And they're like, we got to watch. Like oh, wow. and my girlfriends are like. And my husband was updating them. They're like, oh, he just posted the, the surgery. They're like, that's so cool. They, I mean, they just thought it was they're like, oh, she's going under the arm, armpit. Like, I've never seen that. I think that's another thing that was very helpful to me. When I went to your consultation, you said, um, what are you looking to do? And I told you what I wanted. And you asked if I maybe want to have a family. I said, yes. And you never said like okay well this is what we do this this this, and that you said this is what would be good for you this is what i recommend for you and that was a big thing for me you tailored the surgery for me Mm -hmm. not because you have a certain criteria that you do you do one through six and those are the steps that you do Mm -hmm. and that's it so i think that was a big thing for me you tailored the surgery to me and i appreciate it i'm very very happy Thank you. It's really important. You know, a lot of people get set in their ways, you know, and if you treat everything like a nail and all you have is a hammer, you're not going to have amazing results, right? I think the way you create amazing results, amazing work, people and meet people's expectations is understand what's unique about their person, what are their goals, and then have a big tool chest to figure that out. Mm -hmm. For example, going through the armpit is technically more difficult. If you don't know what you're doing, sometimes there can be more issues. However, in the right person, when done the right way, it's the perfect operation. In ethnic women, if that scar on the fold can do well if you go with smaller implants and you're, you're not manipulating the tissues. But when you're going with a full implant or you want to get to a D cup, right? you did a 490 cc mm-hmm. gummy bear high profile round implant. When you put a bigger implant through the fold, that scar always ends up either dark or a little bit thick. Mm -hmm. The other thing I've noticed is when you make a cut on the fold, oftentimes it doesn't end up nice and round. If you see people closely, they get a little boxy on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to always figure out what is the best approach for this person and then making that approach happen and being effective and knowing. Mm-hmm. If the only way you know how to put a breast implant in is through the fold, you're only going to recommend that, right? Mm-hmm. But for me, breast augmentation isn't something I do on the side. It's what I do. Mm-hmm. I put implants in through the belly button, through the areola, um, through the nipple, through the armpit, through the fold. So you, ha- I feel you have to have a lot of tools to create the best work. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy you saw that and felt that. That's what I try to do. Customize every procedure for every patient. Um, so then you came to the consult, we did sizing, we did measurements, we came up with a size together that we fit, we felt fit, uh, fit your chest, right? Mm-hmm. And how was that sizing process? That must have been hard. It actually was not as, uh, as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, you just right away knew what you were doing, and I felt so comfortable. I mean, everyone, your staff is amazing. They, they're so nice and felt welcomed right away where I felt at ease. Um, and having my husband there was a big thing just because he knew maybe some terms and stuff maybe that I had questions on. Um, he, he came in handy when it came down to medicine. Like yeah. <laughs> he, he was very helpful. But as far as uh, the consultation, I actually ended up coming back again because um, I, I wanted to book my surgery, but I was like, I want a bigger size. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I gathered from my friends who had those breast augmentations and they said, I regret not going bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I, for, I mean, even TikToks, I've, I've, I watched so many videos. Like I said, I'm just a visual learner. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so watching so many TikToks, um, a lot of girls do talk about how they wish it, they, you know, they would have gone a size bigger. Mm-hmm. So, um, then I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to, to Dr. Sajan and I'm going to ask him like, 
listen, this is what I want. I want a little bit more of a fuller size and, and what do you recommend where it's going to fit my anatomy? Mm -hmm. um, because you can't just put a big implant on someone that's, mm -hmm. you know, so, so small. Um, it's just not going to look right. And right. you explained that. And that's how I know that because you've explained that in your videos before and you explained it to me. And so you said, you did my measurements and you said, this is what uh, I recommend. Mm -hmm. And so we finalized the size and I was so happy. I walked out of there and I was like, yep, this is right. And every day that I get dressed, that I get ready, I just, I, I'm like, this is the perfect size. And I mean, I'm only a month out. Mm -hmm. I am so happy. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, after the consultation, what made you pull the trigger to book surgery? Did you have more consults? No, I actually did not have more consults. I did research more um, doctors, but it's just something just told me. And I'm just, I'm the type of person that just goes with my gut. So I, I just said, this, this one, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do. And um, the process was so easy. So I just said, let's do it. And he said, I talked to my husband, because again, he's like my best friend. So... Mm -hmm. I talked to him and I said, let's do it. And he's like, totally your decision. I was like, okay, we're doing it. And so we had plans because this was back, I want to say February. Um, oh, Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. That was consultation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was Valentine's Day, the consultation. And so we had plans probably already for March April, uh, we went to Coachella, mm -hmm. so that was a lot of fun. I wish I would have had them, you know, for Coachella, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think they would have been uh, ready. So I was like, okay, maybe June is probably perfect time. So mm -hmm. that was uh, that was uh, when I had the surgery, and I was very very happy. Just I think I just like I said, just go with my gut. Don't think I need to search any any further, but. Was there something different you saw when you were doing your searches of other doctors versus what I do? Yes, because a lot of them do tend to go like under the fold. Mm -hmm. And well, I'm not opposed to it, but after just hearing your suggestion and what you recommended, then I started searching at result, like looking result for results. Mm -hmm. And I it made sense to me as mm -hmm. to why you recommended that, you know, surgery for to go under the the um, or not under the muscle, because you did go under the muscle, but mm -hmm. the armpit. And so I I just was, I don't know, I mean, I think the biggest thing was the incision, too. Um, it was, if I want to have babies eventually, I mean, I, the all came into into mind. Mm -hmm. Like I said, all everything that you recommended, um, it just made sense to me. I don't mm -hmm. think I questioned it. I think I was a little afraid because... Then TikTok, eventually, after I booked my, my surgery, then TikTok's about how women are taking out their implants now. And mm -hmm. I think we've seen that a lot. And, of course, then um, I remember you talking about when you do so many surgeries, like mm -hmm. they're not all going to obviously have the same results. So mm -hmm. everyone is going to have different results, and, and that's okay. But you were so transparent about it, which I appreciated it. And um, then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let these videos steer me away from what I want to do. And um, I, I was, I don't have, I don't think I don't have any, any, I don't have anything bad to say about. Mm -hmm. I, I think you have to be transparent. Yeah. You know, some people will brush it off saying, oh, that doesn't exist. That doesn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. Typically, and I, I don't like to say anything negative, but the people who say that, there's, they're in two camps. Mm -hmm. Camp one, they're lying. Mm -hmm. Camp two, they don't do enough. They've never seen it. Yeah. Right? So when you do, and you know this from being, you know, you're in mortgage, you see a lot of different things, right? Mm -hmm. When you do something a lot, you see a lot of things. And when you get a hiccup or something that's not expected, in my opinion, the problem doesn't define you, but it's how you respond to it and how you manage it. Mm -hmm. Right? Just like life, we all run across things we don't expect and we don't like. Right. And you're like your personality from what I take is not one to just fall down and cry. You're going to get up, you're going to get stronger, you're going to keep moving forward because that's the best way and you sometimes the only way forward that's positive. Yeah, you, you couldn't know? have said it any better. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I know a lot of people get a lot of pain from surgery. After your operation, was it painful? Yes. 
<laughs> yes, yes, it was very painful. Um, I think so when after I, I think we were done, um, I just remember kind of being a little bit in and out of it and just being in a wheelchair and being like carried out um, and, and Brian, my husband, was there. And um, I, th I think I, on the way home, the ride home, I cried. I was crying. And I think it was just the side, like an effect of, I think anesthesia does that to me mm -hmm. because that did that to me before mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when I got my wisdom teeth taken out. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, I mean, I got home and the pain just, I just felt like, I always say, I felt like an elephant was sitting on me. <laughs> the pressure was so bad. Um, mm -hmm. And then the sleeping part. I love my sleeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I had to get used to sleeping at an angle and, and propped up position where I had so many pillows behind me. I had, again, watched so many videos and mm -hmm. read so many articles. I was prepared for that. But when it came down to it, I was like, oh, this is it. So I remember I couldn't go to sleep. I, I think I was uh, in pain and I had to wake him up and like, hey, I need a, I need a pain medicine. Like I need a, a pill. Like I, I need something. And um, sure enough, like he gave me because I, I don't think I had taken it that night. So I took it. I went to sleep. And I think that was one of the nights that I, I where I remember I'm like, in pain mm -hmm. but after that I mean I think probably two weeks later I was feeling so good mm -hmm. I was very happy it went through what I need like all the medicine that I needed to take accordingly and um, after two weeks I was like okay I'm ready to be out and about um, I'm not ready to like you know show them off just yet because there's still a process so but I was ready I was very happy and um, I think just probably the first night or the, the second night um, I, the surgery was on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. so I took Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday off, and then I was back to work on Monday, but I do work from home, so mm -hmm. that was very helpful. Had I been, you know, going into the office, probably would have taken, like, another week or two, <laughs> just to be sure, but, um, everybody's different. I talked to a friend who had no pain at all, so... Mm -hmm. I think everyone's very different. I talked to another friend who went through the same thing I did. She felt so much pressure. So it's everybody's body is different mm -hmm. and reacts very differently. Um, but I, like I said, a week, oh, two weeks later, I was like, oh, I'm ready to be out and about. Enjoy yeah. the summertime. Are you happy you did the surgery? Absolutely, 100% happy that I did the surgery. And I said, Every day I like look and I'm like very happy, very blessed that I got the opportunity to have surgery mm -hmm. and couldn't, wouldn't do it with anybody else because well, thank you. <laughs> I'm very happy with the results. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. Uh, how has your husband felt throughout the process? I know he's been supportive, right? Very supportive. Uh, never steered me from anything like he was a little afraid that I went back for another consultation. Um, to go a little bit bigger mm -hmm. and he was a little worried he's like are you sure you're not going like too big like what if you know what if your body just doesn't look right and I'm like I don't know I just have a good feeling about it I like the size that I chose and then now he's like oh these are like perfect for your body so mm -hmm. very happy that I did um he's been very supportive and I was very again very happy that I got to have him by my side to take care of me because it was you know I think just you don't realize the things that you can't do maybe opening a cabinet or getting a bowl mm -hmm. and you couldn't really do that sometimes so I was very happy that he was there I even made him a badge so he has a badge for work right yeah. I made him my, my own personal nurse badge <laughs> And uh, I told him, can you wear your scrub top, like, the first day? Oh, <laughs> to be, like, my personal nurse. But, I mean, he wore it one day. But, <laughs> That's awesome. um, but he's been awesome. So I think I'm, I'm very blessed in that sense. That's great. Um, some guys get jealous about their partners getting a breast dog, and they're not big fans of it. Did he ever show any of that? No. He's... Uh, he's no, he's so for it. Like he's so for flaunting them. He's so for um, showing them. Like he's never once been like you can't wear that. That's there's no way. He, I'm like I said, he's such a great guy that he he's not like that. 
at all. And I, I'm, I'm very happy because I wouldn't be with someone that's like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just very much out there. And not like I'm out and about, but yeah. I'm very much where you're not letting me wear what I want. I don't think we can be together. That's maybe I'm not the partner for you. Yeah. Um, but I want someone that's going to support me, but knows that I'm going to be loyal to them. <laughs> and he feels that security 100%. So awesome. I think that's also why he's okay with, hey, where? So like we went shopping the other day and he's, I was showing him like the cutest shirts and he's so for it. And he's already bought me clothes and he's like, Look, the, I think these are great, and he is looking on the online, and he's like, "What about these tops?" And they're, you know, I don't, I don't say like revealing, but they are, you know, showing like tank tops and stuff. So, he he's for it. He's very very supportive. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I think you've created that environment where he feels that way. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. We've built a very good foundation, and our our relationship is in a really good place. Our marriage is gonna grow even better. Um, we've we have that already set up where maybe younger relationships don't don't have that just yet but um we do and i think it's our foundation that we fall back on if you could look back on your experience what advice would you give somebody else thinking about this if you're thinking about having a breast augmentation i would say um do your research um as far as if who your doctor is so i think a lot of um People are like maybe looking for out of the state because it's, you know, they have this doctor that is um, very famous or something. And it's like you want to look, do the research. How how do they do their surgeries, right? Um, Have that consultation. Ask your questions. Um, I watched, again, so many videos. I, I think I was very lucky in the sense that you were just posting those surgeries mm-hmm. on on story on in your stories and I got to learn a lot like what's going to happen what ha- what do they do so I think if someone is one is thinking about it definitely I don't want to say do it um because there's so many things right so many um things that you have to think about but make sure you have someone that's there that can take care of you um and your support I think having support um to fall back on is very important um but i the biggest thing is picking the right surgeon for you mm-hmm. you're right mm-hmm. when, when you watch my live stream and my stories you know I, my goal is to keep it educational you know i think you know we don't do anything goofy or silly while we're doing surgery and you've given me your honest opinion so far and again did you ever feel that um the stories or the streams were not professional or anything like that or did you feel they were educational no never i felt they were educational i mean even the tiktok funny ones are educational like where you're even having like a heel you're stepping on an implant on heels yeah. and i mean those are goofy but educational yeah, yeah you're right that's awesome thank you yeah well, thank you so much for being our guest today andrea i've learned a lot I know your ordeal will teach our listeners how and what to expect as they start their own journeys. I appreciate your time and I'm honored to have you as my patient. And I would even say my friend. Thank Thank you. you. Thank Thank you you so much. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks for listening to the Plastic Surgeon Podcast. And please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts for more great content. For my live surgeries and adventures throughout the week, catch us on all social media at Real Dr. Seattle. Bam.